This is an introduction to digital art. What part of digital art? Uh, the, the drawing part. The part where you're sitting at your desk, you already have some hardware to draw on, and now you need inspiration to strike you. That part of digital art, but with less lightning and more sparkles. Wait. I don't have a tablet or a screen thing or a pen. Don't worry, I gotcha. This is a two-part series. This is the part where I talk about drawing and the other part is on my other channel where I talk about the hardware and the software you need to get started. For this video, I'm gonna be introducing you to the tools and the basic techniques and talk about how artists work digitally. The cool thing about digital art is there is no right or wrong way to create it. What matters is how it looks in the end. Having a place to start could be really comforting. Let this video be your comfort food. Uh, don't eat that. It's the dessert tray. That's just for show. What? I'll get you a fresh one from the back. Throughout this video, I'm going to be drawing on the iPad using an app called Procreate, but this is really important. You don't need this app or this iPad in order to do these lessons. You can follow along in any program that you like. So if you'd rather use Procreate on the iPad or Krita or Clip Studio or that old virus-ridden version of Photoshop you found on BitTorrent, <laughs> that's fine, I guess. Are you gonna be okay? Oh, I've had worse. There are some resources that we're going to be using here that will save you some time and you can download those on my website for free, bradsartschool.com. There's some paid stuff there too. That's how this channel makes money. My new intro to digital art course is packed with step-by-step -step projects that will get you up to speed fast. More on that at the end of the video. Stop selling, get a move on. All right, all right, back to the art. If you are coming from traditional art or just starting out, there are two things that make digital art great, brushes and layers. There's a lot of other stuff too, but those two things in particular. Every drawing app has brushes. We call them brushes, but they can be any traditional art tool recreated digitally. This brush looks like a paintbrush when you draw with it. This one looks like a pencil. This one looks like chalk. And this one looks like it was made in a unicorn accident. I didn't know unicorns were real. So yeah, brushes can mimic real life tools or do things that can only be done in digital art. You can change the size of your brush. You can change the opacity or how much paint comes out of your brush. And when you draw with a stylus, you can change the way your brush looks based on how hard you press with your stylus. As I press harder with my stylus, more paint comes out. Those are the basics and all you need to know for now, but it gets way more complicated and you can do so much with these. A lot of programs let you create your own brushes, customize the ones they already have there, or import brushes that other people have already created. What about layers? Yes! If I was going to draw a comic, you know, old school style, on paper, I might sketch out my scene first in pencil. Then I'm going to ink those pencils with the pen. When the ink dries, I erase those pencils. Then maybe I color in my comic with watercolor or gouache. Gouache? It's like a really thick watercolor. Not important right now. <laughs> To do this digitally, I would use layers. Layer one would be my sketch. Maybe I'd create another layer for my inks and then another one for my colors. Layers can be turned on and off. So when you're done with your pencil layer, you don't need to erase or delete it. You just toggle it off. If your pencil sketch got a little bit dark and you can't see your ink lines really well, no problem. Just turn down the opacity of that layer so you can see it better. You can duplicate your layer so you can experiment with your drawing without losing your originals. You can try different color combinations, toggle layers on and off to compare those colors. There is so much you could do with layers. This is just scratching the surface. With that out of the way, let's do a real project. I made some 3D renders here. We're going to paint these suckers. Well, one of the suckers. This looks hard. Nah, you got this. Just follow along. Even if it's not perfect, you're probably going to do better than you think. If you want to paint along, you can screen capture this image right now and paint along on your own canvas. I set up my canvas to be a standard paper size. Then I pasted in this image, moved it to the top, and maybe resized it a little bit as needed. That leaves the bottom area for my drawing. You can get this file for free over at bradsartschool.com if you don't want to do all the setup yourself. Even though many art programs come with hundreds of brushes, I tend to stick to only a few. There are four in particular I use a lot. A pencil brush for sketching, a clean ink brush that has some crisp edges and changes width based on how much pressure you apply with the stylus, and an airbrush with some nice faded edges. A hard round brush that changes opacity based on the amount of pressure. I'm going to be using three of those four brushes here. So let's start with our pencil brushes. Got it. Now we can use the skills we learned in earlier lessons from season one on perspective to figure out vanishing points and all that fun stuff. Stuff, but for the purpose of this lesson, it's okay to go in and just trace the cube. <gasps> Don't worry, it's gonna be okay. There'll be plenty of time later to figure out how to draw it. I am going to make a new layer and sketch out that cube 
on its own layer. I just wanna get the outline of the cube and maybe sketch in where I think the shadow is gonna go. Now I can take my move tool and move this sketch down to the bottom half of my drawing. I can even adjust the opacity of that layer so it's easier to see through on the canvas. All right, we need a new layer now. This layer is going to be our cube. Another handy tool in your digital art backpack is the color picker tool. This lets me choose a color from anywhere on my canvas. I'm gonna grab the color along the side of this cube first. Now I can use my hard hard edged inking brush to make the outline of our square. Now, the faster you draw a line, the smoother that line is gonna be. That also means you might overshoot, but that's okay. You can always grab an eraser tool and take out the extra parts of the line you just drew. Once we get the outlines, we can fill this in with color. Art apps have a tool called the fill tool. Usually it looks like a paint bucket, but every app is a little bit different. With one click, you can fill an enclosed space with color. Mine does not look good. Some fill tools work better than others. There are settings that make this better, but for simplicity, you may have to go in with your stylus and paint in the gross edges. Let's go back to our reference and grab the color of a different side, this one. And then we're gonna repeat those steps by drawing the outlines and filling that in as well. And you guessed it, we're gonna do this one more time for the top. Draw in our outlines and then fill it on in. You're getting the hang of this. Next up, I wanna paint the background. Let's put that on its own layer. Now that new layer that I just created, I wanna make sure that is below my cube layer. Anything we paint on top is gonna to block out the cube. We won't be able to see it. That's why it has to be underneath. I can't see the reference now. If we wanna fill in just part of the canvas, we can use a selection. That's another tool. Those tools usually look like little dotted line icons. I could do selections in squares, rectangles, circles, or even draw my own shape. For now, I'm gonna stick to the square. I'm gonna drag it across the area that I wanna fill, then I'm gonna grab my fill tool and boom. Just fill it with color. It looks like the reference has a gradient on it. It does. That's what the airbrush is for. In digital painting, there are hard edges and soft edges. The cube has nice, crisp, hard edges but this gradient is a really soft edge. Different brushes are gonna help us get those different effects. So I'm gonna use the color picker to grab the dark part of my gradient along the top. Next, I wanna lay down paint where I've already painted. Now I can use the selection tool and select that again. That works perfectly well, but there's another setting I wanna talk about here called Alpha Lock. This is called different things in different apps. In Medibang, it's called Protect Alpha. Usually if you see the word alpha somewhere on your layers, you found the right thing. Now paint is only gonna go where we've already drawn something. Nice. Now I'm gonna make my airbrush super big, real big. And I'm gonna turn down the opacity a little bit, maybe to about 50%. Then with my stylus, I'm just gonna lightly go over the top and I'm gonna scrub back and forth and slowly fill in that gradient. The less opacity I use and the slower I go, the more organic it's gonna look. This isn't looking right. Yeah, what this really needs to come alive is a shadow. To do that, I wanna make another layer. Now let's take a look at the reference though. See in our shadow, it's got this super dark edge right along the bottom of the block. And then over here on the left hand side, it's got this gradual shadow just kind of going out. Let's do the dark shadow first by grabbing the color from our reference. And then I'm gonna take my airbrush and I'm gonna make it much, much, much smaller. And with that, I can just go in and paint in underneath my cube. If your paint appears above your cube, just move the layer underneath it and you should be good to go. Now I wanna do the shadow on the left. Let's create another layer for that. You could do it on the same layer, but this way if we mess up, we only have to redo one part of it. Cause this is probably the trickiest part of the whole thing. I'm gonna make my airbrush bigger and I'm gonna turn the opacity down to like somewhere between 10 to 20%. And I'm just gonna come in here and lay down strokes over and over and over again. It's the gradual addition of paint that's gonna make it look smooth and organic. If yours gets that layered effect, you can always delete this layer and try again. Or if you wanna earn some bonus points, you can see where your drawing app's blur tool is. Blurring the shadow is really gonna help it look more organic. There are other details here worth noticing. For example, the sides of my cubes aren't perfectly flat colors like I have them painted here. Sometimes there's a little bit of a bounce shadow going on down along the bottom. I can always alpha lock my cube, grab that slightly darker color and go over a few times with the airbrush. If you're using some of the other references on my site, you're gonna see a lot of details like that. On the rounded cubes, you're gonna have some soft edges instead of hard edges on that cube. So you're gonna have to use the airbrush a lot more. There's also some little things like little reflective highlights you're gonna have to pay attention to. Now, several of those references were included for free, but if you want the big batch with some really super complicated ones to practice with, that's all part of my introduction to digital art course. What if you just wanna learn drawing next? Check out season one of Brad's Art School right here on this very YouTube channel where we cover all of the basics of drawing. All right, you can talk about your course now. It's mostly project focused. So each lesson is a project and you follow along and you can see step by step what I'm doing as I am doing it. From a sketch, 
all the way to the finished piece. Like I mentioned, there's a lot of 3D renders in there and I walk you through some of the more complicated ones. The course is also slower than this video because I don't have to appease the YouTube algorithm gods, but it's step-by-step -step so you can paint along and learn as you go. There are lessons on inking, there are lessons on coloring, lessons on using traditional brushes and comic brushes, adding textures to your drawing, picking colors, changing colors, adjusting shadows, more practice sketches than you can shake a stick at. You can draw on any painting program that you want. I will even provide PDFs so if your app doesn't match match up to mine, you can go and check and find the right tool. Go to bradsartschool.com to check it all out. Thanks for watching this video.